On the breakfast today, the Borno state government begins shutdown of internally displaced persons camp, leading to outcry for some quarters. Also, once again, the conversation on governors and the misuse of billions of Naira in security votes. The Nigerian government is being urged to open the probe. And we'll also be taking you through the papers this morning and discussing the major stories. Glad to have you join us on The Breakfast here on PLOS TV Africa. Welcome to the new year. And of course, uh, thanks for joining us. I am Osaogi Ogbowa. And I am Messi Boko. Happy New Year. Same to you. <laughs> Great to have you join us once again. And we hope that we have a very interesting discussion this morning. Uh, moving from Borno State, where the governor has begun shutting down internally displaced persons camps. And there is some, you know, outcry, you know, from some quarters. Uh, some people, of course, are uh, complaining about it. And so we would have an extensive discussion about that this morning. Uh, trying to understand what those persons uh, would be dealing with as those camps are being shut down. And, of course, the motive uh, behind uh, what the governor is doing. And also, uh, the Social Economic uh, Rights and Accountability Project, SERAP, as they are popularly called, uh, have, of course, urged President Mohamed Buhari to open an investigation into the use and misuse of security votes by governors. It says billions and billions of Naira are being laundered and misused, you know, simply, um, you know, uh, by these governors, you know, that are paid to them as security votes. So we'll also get into that conversation. But of course, first, with our top trending stories this morning, we go back to, of course, a follow-up on Sylvester Oromoni, who, of course, uh, has made major, major conversations across Nigeria in the last uh, few weeks. Um, sometime last week, we spoke about complaints from a cousin of his who had uh, said that the Lagos State government was seemingly delaying the investigation. And um, a couple of days later, there was, of course, a release of autopsy results uh, from Delta State, and it showed a very, very shocking um, um, reports. You know, it simply it said um, that he died of blunt forced trauma, acute lung injury, and uh, chemical intoxication. And that was the autopsy report done in Delta State. There was also one done here in Lagos State um, that, of course, the cousin, if you remember, was asking the Lagos State government to go ahead and release those results um, without wasting any time. Uh, the Lagos State Police also then um, responded to this autopsy re um, report and um, said that they're still waiting for a toxicology report from, you know, Delta State before they can go ahead and release uh, the um, autopsy result. And, of course, criticism also because of the release of the housemasters and the boys that were accused of, um, of um, killing, you know, Sylvester. Um, the response there was um, from the legacy government or legacy police was that, you know, the results that have been put out so far from the autopsy have not been able to, are, are not enough, you know, to charge them with murder. And so since they've not been charged with murder, the time that the court asked them to be held, you know, has elapsed. And so they had to release them. Um, and that's, you know, with, you know that, that's their response. But of course, the... Um, Family is saying, you know, what exactly is holding back the toxicology report? If you have done an autopsy here in Lagos that you've refused to release, then why don't you also do the same toxicology um, um, investigation here in Lagos, you know, and put them out together? Um, you know, instead of wasting time, it's taking about three weeks. Now, this should be getting to the fourth week um, since all of this conversation started. How long does it take to do an autopsy and put out the results? So, so uh, already it's becoming that, uh, it's already looking like the conversation surrounding uh, the death of Sylvester is a social, I mean, the call for justice is becoming a social talk. Uh, doesn't feel like we're paying more attention to, um, you know, this particular incident and what should be done. Like, uh, it's been rightly mentioned by the family. How long should it take for all of the reports and everything that needs to be put together? But first of all, you remember that um, the young, those boys, I mean, the kids that were actually, uh, or the children that were actually involved or accused of killing Sylvester were charged for conspiracy and homicide. And if you look at it, it's been established already that, you know, homicide would be the fact that you're responsible to, for the death of another person. So, but the question now is looking at the aut autopsy re report, I mean, or, I mean, the result is actually out now. You want to begin to ask yourself, how did he get the intoxication, you know, the acute lung and intoxication in his system? Was it that he was 
Um, he did it himself. Could he have been forced? These are some of the questions. I mean, these are some of the things that, you know, the police should actually begin to establish. Because at the end of the day, you're saying, oh, yes, this person, we don't have enough evidence to charge them, you know, to court. But there's also another thing, I mean, I mean, with mother. But there's also usually a thing about um, when you have somebody... Um, I, I've forgotten how it's been called in, in law, but usually at, at, your, at the dying point, as Sylvester confessed and he talked about, it's usually very valid because you know why? At that point in time, no one is... The law would not see it as anyone trying to coerce you and force you to say some things. And so usually it is respected. I'm sure there's a particular name for that. I don't remember what it's called. So but what we, all of this is really, really sad. And I'm hoping that the police will be able to put the dots and cross the T's and all yeah. of the I's because these are questions. And if that's found in him, first of all, we saw pictures of him uh, with, you know, bruises, the mouth and what have you and all of that. So now the aut autopsy report has it that there was some kind of acute um, long injury due to some kind of intoxication. And you begin to ask yourself, how did he get it there? How did he get into his system? Did he take um, it himself? Did he cost that to himself? Did someone cost that for him? I mean, was it... So all of this is what well, we're hoping that can be answered. The major questions, you know, for me are, you know, why the autopsy result from, uh, you know, the Lagos State in Police investigation has taken so long to be put out. Um, and that is, you know, bringing you know, um, the narrative that it, there seems to be, you know, a conspiracy to delay or to find a way to, of course, a stall the investigation and some of all of that. And you can't blame people for feeling that way when it's taking you three weeks or a month, you know, to simply put out an autopsy report. Um, and of course, also, you know, asking for a toxicology report from Delta State when you could do one here. Um, that's, for me, is the first part. And then the second part would be, um, the, you know, the reason the house masters were arrested, I'm really not sure, you know, if they are going to be charged with criminal negligence or, you know, if they will be charged with murder also. Um, um, from, of course, you know, his dying statements doesn't seem like they were very, they were very much involved. Um, I personally feel um, a, a, a lot of anger, you know, mostly because, you know, and, and that's in response to the questions as to how he died. Um, the school, you know, the initial statement by the school talking about how he, he was playing football and, you know, he had a leg injury and, and, and that's, you know, the cause of his death. And also Kemi Olunoyo, um, which of course for me, you know, made me start to say that I think that the war on drugs in Nigeria needs to be tightened and Buba Mara needs to do better because it seems like there are certain people that might be living in houses that, you know, the, the cloud over their houses is filled with you know, cocaine dust, you know, because that's the only reason Kemi Lunoyo would come out and put out a statement or make a statement like that and say that, you know, he killed himself or he, how, he, he how consumed, could he kill yeah, that he consumed, you know, those um, chemicals by himself. It, it, it shocks me, you know, that that, that is what a, a human being would say. So th that for me, and of course, also the school trying to find a way around, you know, um, not being held responsible for it, you know, and, and putting out a statement about football and all of that. How is the life of, a, a, of an 11-year-old boy less important than your image as a school? How, how, how do we but, as but, a society, but, you know, it just how do we as a society not value life enough, you know, to ensure that, you know, there is immediate justice or there is, you know, an... an unhindered investigation into his death and how does his school for i mean yeah you know i know that you know there are laws and you know we need to work with the, the laws of the land but that for me that school should have no has no absolutely no reason to be opened again because they have not shown that they are responsible for the safety of every child that is there and they are you know also not shown that they are willing to take responsibility um you know when there is a situation like this so for me those are the big you know big challenges that i have with all of it you know, the, um, some persons, I mean, over, the, over, over time and over the days that we have to talk about, you know, all of these issues, one of the concerns that's been raised is the fact that how do you keep, you know, children without any kind of supervision? Now, one would expect that with the kind of fees that's been paid, I mean, the, the, the resources that people have to, you know, pay to have their kids and their wards in this school, um, there probably would have been a CCTV camera that would probably would show eventually what transpired and all of that. It's really, really sad. But I know that if we are very willing, there's a will to it, we're definitely going to, you know, get the answers. But it, it brings us back to the conversation of saying that there's usually might. There's a play of might, interest, some elements that want to be protected and trying to protect, mm. you know, the image of the school. It brings us back to the fact that we constantly do not have any regard and respect for lives of oh, well. human.
We'll, we'll continue, of course, to give you updates on this story um, as they emerge. Let's move away from Lagos State and from Nigeria entirely, move to Ghana, where there is a very shocking uh, video. We hope we thought that we were going to be able to show you that video uh, this morning. Um, but, of course, uh, it's a very, very shocking video that showed uh, a pastor, um, you know, church leader um, at a crossover service simply, you know, in his special way, trying to usher people into the new year, but mostly females in the church, uh, where, of course, he made them undress completely in front of the rest of the congregation or every other person who was there and, you know, sit in a basin that was put in front of him so he can bathe them. And these weren't kids. These were grown females who, you know, took their uh, clothes off, you know, so that the pastor can bathe them. And then there was, you know, maybe an assistant pastor right next to him, um, you know, you know, rubbing anointing oil and, and the likes, you know, over their naked bodies while, you know, people watch. And there was a camera filming. Um, that, of course, also created a lot of outrage and a lot of conversations over the weekend. Um, you know, and for me, you know, uh, I, I, I watched a video some time ago and I completely agree with, um, you know, a colleague from a different um, television station saying that there is a mental health crisis in Africa that is not um, being taken seriously. And there's a lot of people who have mental challenges that eventually do not get treatment, but instead go to open you churches. Think, you think that that's a mental... Oh, it is. I, I believe it is. Definitely is. There's a lot of people who have mental health challenges and, you know, eventually run off to open churches instead of going to get treated. And so that mental health challenge moves from not just the pastor to the, you know, congregation also for a grown woman to willingly <laughs> go naked in front of her pastor so that he can bathe her. <laughs> you know, into the new years, you know, as a way of washing away no, I, whatever it is. I that is also a mental health challenge. No, well, as much as it's okay to, you know, I mean, everyone is entitled to the opinion and yours is very valid as well. But I'm thinking that it's also, first of all, Africa, we're big on religion. And especially in West Africa, Nigeria is also part of it. But it feels like, you know, gradually we're actually are growing all of that, right? And so uh, what's going on right now in Ghana, it's something to be concerned about. Let's not even forget that there was a statement by the Ghanaian police saying they were going to arrest, you know, pastors for prophecies might, that might just cause panic and create fear and all of that. So but it, it's just the issue of ignorance for me. Even if you have to be part of a religion, and I'm sure that the Bible would say that my people perish for lack of knowledge. I really don't remember anywhere. I wouldn't say that I'm 100% a student of the Bible or probably would have read the Bible from start to finish. But I don't know if there's anywhere in the Bible where it was cited that Jesus himself, those that believing, you know, had mm. that he had. Yes, he washed the feet of the, the, the disciples. It was the feet. And, you know, it was just to show some level of, you know, servanthood and service and all of that, but not necessarily what happened so for me now because the essence of all of that you know washing and um, uh, you know the bath that they actually had was to cleanse them of 2021 and usher them into 2022 so you just bring it up to the kind of ignorance and how it's people constantly no uh, it is um, ignorance um, i don't think it's a mental challenge but uh, of course i mean i know i was i probably be. was over pushing it you know but I, I i i believe that there is a little bit of it, it might be two drops of mental health you know issues in in that space um, no, but I'm but, thinking it's an ignorance issue. Yeah. They constantly just feel that, you know, this is the way. Then you wash off and everything in 2022 is going to be okay. But we forget that life and the world is governed by rules and principle. And until we begin to respect all of that, nothing will change. So 2022... Yeah, well, he hasn't broken any laws, in, you know, in particular. No, nobody's it's, talking it's about really, laws. It's, it's really about, you know, why, you know, any female, any woman. And, and you know, he, he could have done it, you know, to both sexes. No, but, but um, he actually did it too. So it wasn't just about, you know, the, the female. Um, why you will, you know, willingly go and get undressed in front of your pastor and in front of every other person, completely stark naked because and sit in a it. basin in front of him so that he can bathe you. And then, you know, assistant pastor then oils your skin, you know, as, you know, anointing into you. You have yeah. no idea how, you know, the followership, when people constantly, you know, follow. And that's because we, we just feel that um, our problems you know, are just, very, very, you know, religious and spiritual. Yeah. Know, so, so we yeah. don't we don't think about the fact that we have to. There's always for me, I would say there's a human path to every miracle. Would not be in any way shocking if the pastor invites four of them to his house for a weekend. They will know, of, believe it. Yeah. yeah they will believe he, it. He has because said, he has because said according it. to him, it's the Holy Spirit who directed him. And then he started saying that he knows that a lot of persons will be saying, oh, he's a fake prophet and all of that. But you see whatever God has told him to do. Now, mm -hmm. it just brings us back to the fact that we, we don't pay attention as the people in this part. We don't read. Even the religion that you get to follow, it's, it's, it's important that you make reference to the Bible. That you don't take everything with, you know, take everything with a pinch of salt.
Oh, well, good luck to them in Ghana and good luck to those ladies and to um, Mr. Pastor. Um, moving away, let's come back to Lagos State where, of course, the allegations that the Commissioner of Police, Akimo Dumosu, who should have stepped down on the second, um, or today actually, um, you know, was, of course, allegedly uh, accused of shutting down estates gates in Lagos mainland, I think in uh, Magodo, you know, to be precise, because according to allegations, he was delayed while trying to gain exit or entry into the estate. He got, he got upset and ordered his men to arrest the security guards at the estate gate and shut down the gate, prevent um, residents from going out or coming into the airstate. Um, he has not, you know, so far has not responded to these allegations, uh, you know, to share exactly what happened on that day or uh, if these are true. But of course, uh, residents at that estate made videos and, um, you know, complained, you know, that it was the commissioner of police who had gone for, you know, a, a dinner or some evening party at the estate. And while he was trying to either get in or come out, uh, there was some delay at the gate and he ordered his men to arrest uh, these persons. I'm, I'm honestly just going to wait until there is some statement from Hakim Odumose himself. Um, um, and of course, you know, recently he, ha he has been promoted to I uh, AIG, I believe. Um, I'm going to wait until there is some clarity, of course. So if he does get to respond to these allegations, uh, so we can be able to, you know, to discuss this, you know, to its full extent. Um, for now, these are, you know, what he's accused of and, you know, it's a, you know, misuse of power. You know, he, he, in the, the statement, it was called power drunk uh, commissioner of police. But um, until, you know, I would like to hear, you know, from his side of this, you know, of uh, this conversation. Now, the, the, the point is, for, for me, I've actually seen several reports, more like a counter report saying that, you know, he actually did not order a shutdown of the airstate and what have you. But the argument has been, are there protocols? Because, you know, uh, in Lagos, if you live in Lagos, you would understand that uh, Lagos is governed by having estates and all of this estate will probably have security and they have protocols. And there's some estates you have to go through, you will need a code to get in there. And there are some estates you have to go through, you need to call whoever is there, yeah. you know, to get access and all of that. So, but my, my point is, should we respect protocol? At what point was it, uh, you know, was he, um, you know, in an official, was he in an official outing? And even if it's an official outing, is it okay to respect whatever laws are there? Should Absolutely. we just grant you access because you are the commissioner for police? So it brings us back to the fact that we do not have respect for laws and protocols. And we constantly feel that we're above the law. And that's where we are. We cannot make progress until we begin to pay attention to some of these issues. So it feels like you get to the queue, you're supposed to withdraw. And it happens a lot of time. You can't be on the queue and that's because you are a governor. And if you see the governors and some of these, you know, political office holders outside of this country, they, they, they respect, they are, the, they respect the, laws, the law yeah. a lot. They don't have anyone following them around. They don't have anybody. They queue, they respect the law and all of that. But what happens when you are in your country? Nothing stops you from waiting and respecting protocol. And then you feel, the, oh, yes, because, you know, I'm the commissioner for police and I'm the, uh, you know, IJ police. I control, you know, the entire police architecture and the command. I mean, and therefore, arrest me? so why should I? Yeah, and in the same society, you know, when these type of allegations come out, you know, you would expect that, you know, um, he would either immediately respond to it or, you know, there, there's very, you know, a lot of times and there's a lot of, you know, uh, a condemnation, you know, that will get a person to resign. People resign for less, um, but we don't expect that here in Nigeria. And I agree with you, you know, that there's, you know, a couple of people who, um, you know, who are meant to be the gatekeepers, but instead are the ones who are breaking down those gates. They're the ones driving against traffic. They're the ones beating traffic laws. They're the ones not respecting, you know, other people's rights. You know, and these are police officers. These are people in positions of power that should know better and should do better. Um, but it's a society that we live, you know, I'm really just going to, you know, hope that he has a, an actual response, you know, to these allegations that will be able to put some clarity because these are the allegations that the people in the estate and security guards in that estate have put out. They are saying that this is what happened. Um, he cannot, you know, simply just stay silent and act like, you know, nobody's saying anything about it. And, you know, as always in Nigeria, we're not expecting that there will be any punitive measures. We're not expecting that there will be anything, you know, you know, that would shake his career or shake his person as commissioner of police. But it's just going to be a conversation, very likely, and everybody will move on. But if we are trying to move into a better society, leadership needs to start to act better um, so that people will follow. Um, if the people who are meant to, you know, protect the laws of the land are the ones breaking the laws of the land, if, the, if they are the ones who are not even respecting the common rights of the Nigerian, then we don't expect that, you know, citizens will do the same. But once again, we'll wait for a response from Akim Odumosu, the Commissioner of Police here in Lagos State. And of course, finally, uh, we move to um, a very, very interesting, but, you know, for me, very, very shocking, you know, display of 
of childishness and arrogance that took place over the weekend over, um, you know, between the African giant, Burna Boy, and of course, uh, one of Ghana's biggest artists, Shata Wale. Uh, this, of course, started uh, about two days ago when Burna Boy put out statements, you know, welcoming everyone into the new year and then addressing some of the allegations that Shata Wale had made, saying that Nigerian artists, you know, uh, should be, you know, he basically used curse words against Nigerian artists, accusing Nigerian artists and Nigerian music industry of not supporting Ghanaian um, artists or artists from, you know, the rest of Africa. Um, he did get an appropriate response from the, you know, for most people who responded to him, you know, to try to tell him that this was completely false. Um, but that, of course, controversy happened two, three days ago and seemed to have uh, died down until Burner Boy stepped in and asked, you know, that um, Chatawale picks a stadium where they can fight and, uh, you know, settle scores um, that seem to have been brewing for a long time. He had asked that they find any place in the world and settle scores. Shatawali, first of all, misunderstood it, thinking it was a rap battle or a, a freestyle battle he was asking for. And so he clarified. <laughs> but, but it was said, actually very clear. Uh, exactly. <laughs> but I, I'm not sure why he chose to misunderstand it. And so Burner Boy clarified <laughs> and said, no, I want your blood and teeth on the floor. Um, so, so, I mean, all this drama, of course, Shatawali then responded, you know, started putting out videos of how he supposedly helped Burner Boy when he was, you know, gr you know, growing in his career, how his mom knows him, and then went, you know, completely... Um, 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 uh, uh, comp he just went wild, you know, bringing up his mother and his father and, and some really, really wild statements like that. Um, eventually, after all the drama, Burner Boy then apologized and said, um, no, before he apologized, you know, certain parts of this whole conversation that shouldn't be left out. The part where he said, you know, I could have gotten you killed if I wanted to at any time. I could stop you from leaving Ghana. If I choose to, I could make you only safe in Ghana. You know, accused Shatawale of rape. Shatawale returned the same rape allegation like it was uh, uh, Ewagoyen that they were sharing. And, know, uh, and now Shatawale is also saying that there are a lot of girls in Ghana that are willing yeah, to willing speak, to speak out. You know, you know, willing to speak out on all of that. So, you see, first of all, for, for me, I feel like it's totally disgraceful. It's very embarrassing that... Uh, uh, you know, we started off with Chatawali, right? So we're here in Africa and we constantly say that our dependence on, you know, the Western world is too much. And we're hoping that we can get a united Africa and then come together, be a formidable force. That's a good thing that you see that music for us, uh, the entertainment industry is putting us on top of the chart. And that's a good thing to see. Kudos to all of the artists in Nigeria and also in Africa. But I'm thinking that we shouldn't get to that point where we're fighting ourselves. I mean, if we have the enemy, okay, let's not even say the enemy. But if we have the fact that, uh, you know, we need to put our acts together and then come through. Uh, we can't be allowing all of this. So, first of all, yes, what we, um, you know, I was highly disappointed when I read some of the comments and some the videos from Shata Wale. And I'm thinking that, hey, you are Ghana, we're in West Africa, the same region, we can do better for ourselves. And whatever the issue is, we, we, we can actually always find a way, you know, to, you know, resolve all of these issues. But however, looking at, you know, the, res I mean, the response from um, Bonner Boy himself, he, he, he mentioned a few issues. One of it is the fact that, you know, those case of rape, you know, that, the fact that Shatawale, and that's where his beef actually lies, right? Because I know that a lot of Nigerians are very, if you look at the artists, a lot of them just like to go to Ghana, have a great time. It feels like that's a second home from them after Nigeria. So I, I really do not know where that's coming from. But as a people, as a continent, I'm hoping that we can come together and find a way to grow. So if you think that you haven't been carried along in the years, you're not, you know, you're not having Nigerian artists, it can't be necessarily everyone because that would be hasty generalization. I'm sure that there are a lot of collaboration with other artists and what have you. So um, it's just to find another way rather than, you know, being very dirty. Yeah. And some of those issues that were put out, I, I started getting very... Um, you know, a little bit irritated. I'm a fan of Bonner Boy, and in my mind, I'm saying, did he really rape someone? Yeah, so, so um, for me... Did he really do all of that? Because we need to go. And uh, for me, the, the two major points for me are, you know, how these two grown adults, you know, are uh, exchanging rape allegations. Um, like I said, like it's ever going, like, you know, these aren't things that you simply just mentioned. And it really just tells that so for the last couple of years, you've known that this person allegedly committed, you know, sexual assault or rape, and you kept quiet. And if you didn't quarrel now, then nobody will hear about it. And the victims will be somewhere dealing with their own issues, um, seeing you on stage, knowing that you're assaulted, and maybe these allegations are true. Um, and, and that, for me, was a very, very disgusting part of it. And then second also, was Burner Boy himself um, reducing himself into that kind of dirty fight with someone who really 
Yes. Is, is miles beneath him, you know, as an artist. You're a Grammy Award winner. How are you exchanging dirty comments with Shatawale, who really, you know, almost is irrelevant compared to, you know, where you are, you know, in the music industry? Uh, um, and, and he apologized. I'm hoping that, uh, of course, he said he was sorry and uh, it's out of character and the fact that he's getting in that fight. However, we hope that, you know, all of this would be in the past. It's a new year. It's just the 3rd of January. Yeah. And we're hoping to have a very pleasant 2022. All things being a call. All right, stay with us. Coming up next, we have uh, Off the Press, uh, where we go through the major stories making headlines across Nigeria this morning. We'll be back. <laughs>